Hello and welcome to this quick video for all of you that have been asking me around how do you calibrate an ESC. Now having the ESC respond from the full throttle range of your radio is something that is relatively easy to do. However it isn't always needed but when it is it's not particularly a tricky process. So for all of you that have been asking and if you've been directed to this video hopefully this will answer all the questions you have and get you sorted. First thing to talk about is the fact that you only need to calibrate an ESC if you are running it from a PWM signal, pulse width modulation. That's what tends to come out of things like a servo checker or out of something like a PWM receiver, which we use here in the test. If you have an ESC plugged into something like a flight controller running D-shot or multi-shot or one shot of one of those digital protocols, you do not need to calibrate the ESC. You can completely ignore that step. But if you're watching this video, you're probably controlling it via PWM. So if you have an option within the flight control system that you are using, rather than use PWM or traditional or analog control, if you turn on something like D-Shot, then you can just avoid having to play with all this stuff in the first place. Now, the majority of times I'm getting asked this is because somebody has got a new model or they're setting something up and the motor doesn't start turning until the throttle control has moved quite away. And that's not how it's supposed to work. So if that's the situation that you're in, stay tuned. We'll go through how you fix it. But why do we need to fix it? Why do we have to go through a calibration process? Well, pulse width modulation will send a signal to the ESC that will correspond to typically a range between 1000 to 2000 microseconds. And that little pulse has to be measured at the other end. And the range that the radio sends might be 1000 to 2000, it might be 1022 to 1897, it isn't a set value. And because of that, you need to teach the ESC what the range for low throttle and high throttle is. And that is done via calibration. So all you're doing when you calibrate the ESC is you're teaching it what high throttle feels like and what low throttle feels like. So its range exactly matches the range that you're going to be sending it when you need to use that particular motor. So for example, in this instance, and we can see this because I have it connected to a servo checker, this ESC by default that supplied them from the factory is only starting to turn at about 1200. And that's not ideal and it's probably the kind of thing that you are seeing. So how do you do this then? Well, it's pretty easy and straightforward. There are lots of different ways with programming cards and bits and pieces. However, every ESC should work with this method that I'm about to show you using a very simple process that's been knocking around for 15, 20 years. First of all, you need to make sure that the props are off your model for safety. Then you need to make sure that the ESC is unpowered, put the throttle to the maximum position on the radio. See, that's why we removed the props in case something horrible happens. Then you're gonna power up your ESC. It's going to start beeping. And then once it finishes its initialization beeps, drop the throttle down to zero very quickly. And then it will give a confirmation tone. And you should find that the very smallest movement on the throttle will start the ESC turning. That's because it's learned the maximum. And also by dropping the throttle to the low position, the low throttle position as well. So let's do that in practice. So the radio plugged in, we are going to just show that the throttle is not calibrated. So I'm going to wait for it all to power up and go through its initialization beeps. Once it's finished, then I'll move the throttle. And because it is only coming on at about 1200, you see that I can move my throttle quite away before the motor starts running. There's a lot of this dead zone here at the bottom and that's not ideal. That's absolutely what we need to get rid of. And by doing the calibration, we'll absolutely do that. We'll teach the radio what high and low throttle looks like. So let's actually go through it and get rid of all this dead stuff at the bottom of the throttle. So what we're going to do is unplug the ESC. We're going to push the throttle to the top position. Again, make sure that your props are off for this. We're going to plug it in we're going to wait for the receiver to connect. We're going to listen for the initialization beeps to finish. As soon as they are, drop the throttle. It'll finish the confirmation beeps. And now as soon as I move the throttle, the motor is spinning. As soon as it comes off the stop, we're 
working. So that is all calibrated. Just unplugging and power cycling the ESC will store all that information and now I never have to do that again for that particular radio. We can also put it back on the servo checker and just check that that's actually what happened. Has that new value been stored? Oop, there we go, a lot lower now because it's been calibrated. So it's about 120, 125. Above that, it's running. Below that, it's stopping. So this means that it's absolutely been calibrated and that new low throttle position has been stored in the ESC. So there you have it. It's that easy. It is particularly complicated. Just follow those steps and you should be golden. The big tip with this is that when you are doing the calibration routine, don't leave that throttle in the high position for longer than I've just shown in the video, because what can happen with lots of ESCs, they'll go into what's called programming mode, and then you'll be able to set things like the brake and loads of other bits and pieces, and you don't want to do that. My advice would be, as soon as you hear those beeps, drop the throttle back down to zero and you should find that the calibration has worked and you're all set and you've got rid of that little dead band at the bottom of the control. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.